What is good, YouTube? Thank you for tuning in to another review. This is not your average sneakerhead, Tony Ramsey, and today we're taking a look at the most controversial sneaker of 2021, the Air Jordan 1 Trophy Room. Now, before we jump into the details about the sneaker, the release, and also uh, dispel some rumors that are out there about this sneaker, if this is your first time here, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel. We will be doing a giveaway very, 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 very soon, and I will have details in that giveaway on my next video, so now would be a good time to join the channel. Also, please consider leaving this video a like or a thumbs up, as that does help YouTube channels grow. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some details about this sneaker. Now, the Air Jordan 1 Trophy Room is a collaboration between Jordan Brand and the Trophy Room Store, which is actually owned by Marcus Jordan, Michael Jordan's son. And this is actually a release that was put together to commemorate the 1985 All-Star Game that was on February 10th, which is when these are having a rumored release date. And in that game, as the rumor does have it, which is a detail that's actually included in the sneaker, which we'll jumps to a little bit later on, there is rumors that Michael Jordan was froze out of that game by some other NBA veterans as that was his first NBA All-Star game. Now, in terms of the release for the sneaker, no one really knows when the sneaker is actually going to release. The rumored date was February 10th, as that was the same date as that All-Star game that happened in Indianapolis. The All-Star game for 2021 was scheduled to be in Indianapolis, but because of the current situation across the country, it has been canceled. So, whether or not these will actually see a full retail release is still yet to be determined. Um, I've actually heard rumors that the release might be canceled because a ton of the pairs of the sneaker have been backdoored. But either way, really dope sneaker I can get in hand, give you guys a good look at it in case you were planning to maybe grab these sneakers at some point down the line. You can make a decision for yourself, buy some, uh, some really good quality uh, looks of the sneaker in video. But first things first, let's take a look at the box. So these do come in a special box. You have a blue Nike Air box here. And the most of the construction of the box is the same as normal Jordan 1 boxes. But as I mentioned, it is in blue with some right text. Then you also do have some stars all around the side of the box. So on this side, you have the Nike branding with the stars because it was special, supposed to be an all-star themed release. Some more Nike branding stars there on this side and also on the other side as well. Official colorway reads Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG SP. And the official colors are white, black, varsity rail, and sail. And these is actually in an eight and a half. And there's a label so you guys can see the official colorway. Now this is not my personal pair. I actually borrowed this from a very reliable source that's a really close friend of mine. And there's no way he would have had a fake pair to, uh, to let me borrow to review. So you can trust that this pair is 100% legit. Can't quite reveal who I got them from, but just know that I really do appreciate you for letting me borrow this pair of shoes. Once you open up the box, you do have a special graphic underneath. So you see the, the Air Jordan logo there. You have uh, the Wings logo and the Trophy Room logo as well. And there also is a lot number in the corner of the box up top. There's a couple layers of paper underneath. So there is this kind of a milky color uh, paper once you flip that one open. So on the top of it, it's kind of like yellowish on the top and on the bottom of the paper, it is white. Then you have another layer of white paper underneath that. Then you do have the sneakers themselves. One other detail of the unboxing, they do include this ticket to mimic the All-Star game. You guys can see that information there in the camera on both sides of it. Trophy room logo right there. Then on the back of it, there is some text that reads, in 1985, during Michael Jordan's first season, MJ was selected to participate in the season showcase and became the 36th rookie to garner a selection. I won't read the full text, but I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen so you guys can see that there. And if you want to pause the video to read that information, you can. But that also does come in the box. So the embossing experience for the sneaker is it's pretty unique and actually uh, another nice detail to keep in mind if you do plan to grab these. 
Now I will not be doing an on foot portion for these sneakers because as I mentioned, this is not my sneaker. I don't want to put my foot into someone else's sneaker that I do not own. I do plan to still probably grab a pair of these, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video as well. Now let's look at the sneaker themselves. So first things first, off with the biggest elephant in the room is that these did not come with the blue laces. So there's been a lot of controversy about the blue laces that Marcus Jordan posted on his Instagram. And I'll tell you guys this, from, from everything that I've heard, the blue laces only come with friends and family pairs. They do not come with any pairs that were going to be released for retail. But now thinking about it, with they're not going to be a retail release, you're probably not going to see very many pairs with the blue laces uh, floating out and about. And if you do see them, I'd be more skeptical that those might not be real than the other way around. Just my opinion. But let's look at the sneaker itself. So these are actually in the same color blocking as a typical Air Jordan 1 Chicago. But the one thing that's the biggest difference is all over the sneaker, there is this kind of a frozen type of a, a finish over the leather to make them look like they were actually frozen in time. So really nice detail. We'll start here at the toe box. So toe box there, red leather, as I mentioned, some of that kind of glossy finish to make it look like it's frozen. You do have a white leather on the vamp there with your normal Jordan 1 perforation holes. Now the leather on these, it's not the best quality leather. It's not super, people always say shattered backboard quality. I kind of hate that term, but it is what it is. It's not too stiff, but it's also not like the softest of leather. So it's not like the best quality leather that you're going to find on a Jordan 1. Then moving on to the lateral side, you do have a white mid panel there, black Nike check, and that red leather with the uh, frozen finish goes all the way up the eyelets of the sneaker. Then all the way back here to the ankle collar. So around the ankle collar, this detail on the lateral side is actually pretty dope. You actually do have Michael Jordan's signature there printed on the back of the heel counter on the lateral side and not on the medial side. And that's also put underneath that uh, same kind of frozen finish. So you really can't feel it if you rub your hand across it. Then going up here to the Wings logo, you have a black uh, Jumpman Wings logo there. Same thing with that frosty finish on it and that's also underneath of that finish. Sneaker also does have white stitching all the way around the sneaker as well, which is a pretty dope touch to me. Then on the back, you guys can see there, you have uh, the black, you have the heel counter, then you have your little black tab here and a black ankle collar up top. And the ankle collar actually is done in leather too, and that's actually pretty, pretty good quality leather from what I can tell. Then on the medial side, same details, white side panel, um, red up here around the ankle collar, heel counter wraps around, red going up along the eyelets with some white stitching throughout. Looking at the tongue, the tongue is also done in white with a red Nike Air uh, tag at the top. And on the back of uh, the tongue, this pair is actually numbered. You're going to see uh, there were supposed to be 12,000 pairs of these. So each pair is supposed to be individually numbered. And this pair is number 7647 out of 12,000. You can see that there in the, in the camera. They do come with two sets of spare laces. You have a set of, of spare red laces and a set of white laces. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be putting these on, so you're not going to be able to get to see those on foot, unfortunately. Cardboard shoe tree, nothing out of the ordinary there. Then on the insole, you do have a really dope, uh, looks like a, a patch on the insole, and that does have some trophy room and Air Jordan branding for the sneaker. And I'll give you guys some close-up shots of how that looks. Then also on the interior, you have a black sock liner on the interior, and there is a uh, rumor has it printed on the inside of the sneaker. Let's take a look at the outsole of the sneaker. So the outsole is all done in a milky translucent outsole, and there are some stars on an, underneath the outsole too. So there's uh, two red ones and two blue ones underneath the outsole. And that outsole is actually pretty dope too. I'm glad they went with a milky finish and not just like a normal clear or a, a, a blue translucent bottom because those tend to turn yellow. I think as this one ages over time, it actually will blend in with the normal color of the milky outsole, which might be a really dope touch over time. Looking at the right sneaker, so the details are pretty much the same as the left one, except on the back of the tongue of the right sneaker, you do have the date of that All-Star game, February 10th, 1985. But all the rest of the details are exactly the same as the left sneaker. And that's pretty much it for details for uh, the sneaker itself. Now let's talk about the actual uh, rumors about this sneaker. As I mentioned about the blue laces, you're probably not going to see pairs with blue laces unless it's in a friends and family pair that was seated by Marcus Jordan himself sent him out the blue laces. Another rumor is that a ton of the a stock of these, so a ton of the 12,000 pairs that were available were all backdoor to, to resellers for, uh, for a high cost. I would say if you see resellers out there with stacks of these, I would assume that most of them probably do have legit pairs now of course you're going to still find some fakes as a sneaker that has this much hype will always have some some uas and some fakes out there but a lot of your well-known resellers having these i can definitely say that's a, a good indication that 
a lot of pairs were made available to uh, not the, the public, but to, to whoever had the money to get them. Let's leave it at that. Now, let's talk about uh, long-term resale value for this sneaker. Now, with rumors now starting to float around that the retail release of these may end up getting canceled, that's gonna cause the already high resale value of these sneakers to just skyrocket. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the Soulfly Jordan 1 release, I believe from back in 2018, I could be uh, incorrect, but I remember that release ended up getting canceled because the public uh, went crazy for them, so they shut it down. But you started to see a lot of those pairs floating around by your resellers, and they had a ridiculous resale price out of the gate. And these are no different. The resale price on these is already over uh, two grand in most sizes. And I can see that going up over time with there being such a limited amount of pairs of these, number one, with there probably not gonna be a full retail release of these, number two. And number three, with a sneaker having this much hype and a great star line to go along with it, that is the perfect recipe for a sneaker that's gonna have a great long-term resale value so um, I'm someone that collects sneakers really more as a sneaker enthusiast and not just for the value of them so I plan to when I do get a pair of these I do plan to keep them long term as I, I do love the story behind it and I do want to have a piece of this sneaker history in my collection so for me I would grab these if you really did want a pair of trophy room Jordan ones I would say grab them as soon as you possibly can from someone that you actually trust that's gonna be the most important thing so you can feel comfortable with spending that amount of money for them if you do plan to get these me I plan to trade a few sneakers to, to get my pair and I put up a poll on my Instagram whether or not people would trade uh, a number of sneakers to grab these and that poll was pretty interesting that was very very close but the slight majority favored actually trading to grab this pair of sneakers now rather than waiting try to get them for retail and see if the price goes down because in my opinion the price of these is only going to continue to go up it's not going to have a release where they're going to drop down and then go back up over time no the price of these is going to remain high for a very long time so if you did want to grab these as i mentioned now would be a good time to go ahead and do so but that's going to do it for my review of the air jordan one trophy room so let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about this sneaker um i know this is a very controversial sneaker a lot of pairs of these have been floating around a lot of different mixed uh, uh information floating around about these as well but in my opinion i think it's an actual dope sneaker i know the hype on these is probably going to start to uh to turn into hate because that typically happens when you have a release that does get gobbled up by, uh, by resellers early on in the market. You, you can't really ever get around that part of it, but I still think the sneaker is dope. I thought it was dope when I first saw it. I think it's dope now I have it here in hand and I plan to definitely get a pair of these for myself and keep these in my collection long term. And I actually do plan to rock these once I do get them, uh, get my own personal pair. So, um, let me know what you guys think. If you got them, would you rock them or would you flip them? Or do you just not care about the sneaker at all because the public is not gonna really have a good chance to grab them for retail. So either way, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. But that's gonna do it for my review. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share down below. Stay tuned for more reviews as well as I will have a giveaway information coming up really, really, really soon. So now be a good time to join the channel. Again, this is Not Your Average Sneakerhead, Tony Ramsey, looking at the Air Jordan 1 Trophy Room, and I'll catch you guys on my next review. Peace.